Hello there, and welcome to this third lesson in the series on Unity Fundamentals, uh, specifically designed for the students at Saturday Academy. My name is Will Patillo, and I am the instructor for this course. And in today's lesson, we're going to be building a simple escape the room game. I'm going to delete this cube because I no longer need it as a point of reference. And I uh, create a, actually, I suppose I didn't need to delete it because I'm creating a new one. And I'm going to call this a wall. And I'm going to bring it up because uh, what I'm starting with is creating the room that we're going to need to escape from. So I'll just bring this over, set it uh, behind the player somewhere, and I'm going to scale it up. So I'll start, make this the back wall. Uh, so I'm going to stretch it along the x-axis. Let's go for a distance of 10. Oh, that looks a little short. I'll make it 20. That looks like it might be good. Uh, also make it uh, a little higher up. So okay, so there it is on the ground. Uh, 2.5, if it's a width of 5, should be good and uh, make sure it's on the x-axis it is zero in that direction. Okay, that's fine. There's our forward wall. Now I'm going to select the wall, uh, press control D to create another wall, and then I'm just going to reverse some of these dimensions. So this, instead of being 20x, 1z, I'll have it 1x and 20z. Okay, and now I have a wall that's facing that way. I'll just move it over. Actually, I'll just use a little math here. So let's say negative 10 should be about right. Uh, and then I'll drag it forwards. Okay. Uh, so Z at 2 seems to work fairly well. Uh, you can take some time to get these a little more lined up. 2.1. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good right there. Now I'm going to press this, this wall 1, press control D. And now I uh, very easily place it by just changing this negative into a positive. Now I have a wall on the other side. Uh, select this wall and duplicate it and switch it on the Z. Okay, that's actually not quite far enough, so I'll just drag this to where it visually looks about right. Now this wall is actually not going to be a wall, it's going to be my doorway. So um, to get that working, I'm going to shrink this down, uh, let's say 5, that looks like a, a wide enough doorway. Uh, and I'm also going to create a new material for it. Um, gonna, so go into Materials, right click, Create, New Material, and I'm going to call this, um, actually I'm going to call this Wood, and I'm going to create a nice brown color. So click here on this little color picker, move this over to this region, roughly like so, and then move this around so that I have, kind of looks like a, like a wooden sort of brown. Uh, that's good enough that I can drag this in. Oh, by the way, another way you can assign a color to thing is if I click on the object and if I look at the mesh renderer component and then open up the materials, you'll see this default material right here and I can drag this in, or I can click this little um, circle and find it in my materials list. So there we go. Now I don't quite like this shade, so I'm going to change it. Um, I can change it here, or uh, I can go right here and select this drop down and access the, the material properties and change it here. So uh, whichever fits for you. All right, there. That's That'll be good enough for now. Okay, now I'm going to create some more walls. Um, and actually, I'll so just go back to this first wall, copy it, and uh, I'm going to set it at the same position as the door and just kind of shrink it over to each side. So I'm going to copy the component on this transform and paste the component values over here uh, so that actually shrank it down. Now I have this wall and I can drag it over there. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. I'll just use this thing here to stretch it till it looks about right. 
move it over some more. You can take your time to get things all perfectly aligned if you like. Uh, next, I'm just take this wall, duplicate it, and then just switch the X from negative to positive, and now I have a wall on the other side. Now, this is looking a little bit messy in the hierarchy, having all these objects up like this. So I'm going to create a new empty game object, and just for simplicity, you'll set its position at zero on in all three, and then I'll take these, so I'll click this top wall, hold shift, press this bottom wall in the set, and then have them all selected, and then drag them into this empty game object, and I'm going to rename that again with F2 for escape room. Alright, so now my hierarchy is nice and clean, and everything in my escape room is all together. Um, great. So there is my room, and these all have colliders attached to them already, so if I run my game and I move around, uh, oh, I'm moving right through the walls. What's going on? I have a collider on my character and colliders on the walls, but they're not colliding. Well, the reason for it is because I, this player is missing a rigid body. Uh, so I'm going to click Add Component, type in Rigid Body, and go to Regular One, not Rigid Body 2D, and have it use Gravity. Is kinematic is kinematic is checked off, and actually it's yeah that should be fine. I'm going to save. I always constantly be saving your project, um, and something crazy is just happening right here. What's going on? I click Scene, and my character has fallen down on its face. That's how embarrassing, and now it can't move. All right. So what's happening with that? Well, remember, my character model is this capsule. It's kind of round on the bottom. It's also slightly uneven because it has this weight uh, for its, its goggles, and so it just falls over. So there are a lot of ways we could prevent that from happening. Um, and the reason it's happening right now is I have gravity checked on, so that and that that wasn't true before. So now it's it's just like a little top just fallen over. Now I could fix that by unchecking is gravity, and that should work fine. But uh, you know I, I'd like to I kind of like the idea of having gravity on this object because if I lift it up and go into the game right now without gravity checked, I'm just kind of flying around, and, and maybe you'll want that, uh, but for this game, this isn't a flying game right now. It, it might be an ability we bring in later, uh, but we don't need that right now. Whereas if I have gravity checked, then I fall to the ground and I stay on the ground. We just need to solve this falling over problem. So the uh, one of the simplest ways I can do that is I just, just go under constraints and I will freeze the rotation on all of the axes. Uh, so now, I go here, and I'm staying upright, and now I can run into the wall, and I stop. When I try to move into it, it just I'm not able to. So I just introduced a bunch of concepts involving rigid bodies and uh, physics and so on. So I'm going to take a moment to just digress a little and explain what those are. So prior to adding this rigid body, objects already had colliders. So this is the capsule collider on the player. I can click Edit Collider to see the exact boundaries of it. See this little green wireframe here. Same goes for these walls. They also had box colliders on them. And what a collider is, is, you could think of it as like a mathematical entity used to determine when it's overlapping with another collider. However, say you have two objects are overlapping, well, so what? What should the game actually do with that information? And that's where physics comes into play. Uh, when, one object, when one physical object runs into another object, it should stop. And that's a physical interaction, so that means the object needs to listen to the physics system. 
and attaching a rigid body component to an object is a way of hooking it into Unity's built-in physics system. So now that it has a rigid body, it doesn't just know that a collision happened, it knows to actually stop. Now, the reason we have these constraints here, and, and one thing you might be wondering about is, well, hey, we, we just you know spent a bunch of time creating this rotation uh, ability in our in our movement, and hey, you know that that still works. I can still rotate. What what's going on with these freeze rotations if I can still rotate? Well, the thing that these where these constraints work is that they only apply to movements that are the result of the physics system. So if I say turn off these uh, constraints here. That occasion where I just fell over uh, was because of the physics causing me to topple. Whereas, say if I uh, untick these and then set my rotation back to zero manually, whereas when I'm using the 7 and 9 or Q and E keys to rotate, that is being done through code. It is not using the physics system. So these constraints don't apply. And so that works great for us. Uh, we don't need something to hit the character and cause it to just continuously spin or to fall over when it, when it gets knocked down, but we still want it to be able to rotate when the program tells it to rotate. Uh, so just ticking these um, is a great way to do that. Now, another tick box that often gets people confused is this is kinematic. And essentially what is kinematic uh, does, so not checked is kind of the default behavior and does what you would expect it to. If is kinematic is checked, then that means this object does not respond to physical interactions. Well, wait a minute, if, if it doesn't respond to physical interactions, what's the point of having a rigid body at all? Well, something that is a rigid body but is kinematic will still cause physical interactions and other things that it runs into. And I think the best way to illustrate that would be to just create a little example. So for that, I'm gonna go outside the room over here and I'm gonna create a couple of 3D objects. I'm gonna make a couple of spheres. One sphere and I'm just gonna duplicate this and make another sphere and then move it aside a little. All right, so I got two of them. And I'll move these down to the ground. Just a little bit above, that that works. And I'm just so I can differentiate them, I'm gonna make one of them black and the other brown. All right, now I'm gonna make each of these attach a rigid body to both of them, have them both use gravity and both be not kinematic. So I'm going to run the scene and go over into scene view so I can see them. And I'll take this black one and I'm going to move it into the brown. And when it runs into it, they both are affected. Okay. Now, try that again. And this time I'm going to have the black one be kinematic and the brown one is not. So now I take this, go back into scene view and notice actually, Right off the bat, it's not falling uh, because gravity is a physical effect and it is not being influenced by physical effects. So actually, gravity is kind of irrelevant at this point. Now, if I take this black sphere and I run it into the brown one, the brown one moves and the black is ineffective. Now, let's say I switch them. I say that the black is not kinematic and the brown one is. Run the scene. Okay, okay, go here take the black one again, I move it into the brown one, and the black is knocked aside, and the brown does not move. Uh, so I'd recommend uh, if you're following along and you want to know, get a more intuitive understanding of how rigid bodies work, then just take these two spheres, try ticking various settings, and uh, try just moving them around. And you, know, you can go in the scene view so that you can have direct manual control over them and just keep playing around with them until you have a nice good sense of how rigid bodies and colliders work. 
So, for now, uh, I'm just going to take these spheres, and I'm going to delete them, because I'm not going to be using them in the game, but again, just keep exploring with them as much as you need. So, now going back into our escape room, we're able to move around, and the room is containing us fine. Now we need a way out. So, I'm going to create a new object, and I'm going to call it, I'm gonna make, a, make it a cube. Put it over in the corner of the room. And I'm going to call this a button. Alright, and I'm going to create a new material. I'm just going to call this red. Go here to the albedo and set the green and blue to zero. Now I have a nice red material. Drag it onto the button, and all right, now I have a nice, lovely red button. Lift it up a little higher, and great. Now I'm going to create a new script, and I'm going to call this contact event. Because the goal with this button is I'm going to walk into it, and once the player walks into the button, this doorway is going to disappear and allow the player to walk through. So for that to work, it needs something needs to happen when there is contact. All right. All right, so I'm going into my uh, contact script that I've just created. Make sure it's named correctly, inherits from mono behavior. I've already deleted the boilerplate methods uh, on start and, uh, of start and update. I've also gotten rid of some of the libraries that I don't need, so I'm only using Unity Engine. I'm going to start by using one of Unity's built-in methods, void on, uh, start with collision, enter. And by the way, I could type in private here, and Unity assumes private by default, unless you explicitly say public or protected or something else. Uh, it's nice to be explicit. I, I don't always remember. So private void on collision enter. This built-in method requires one argument of type collision, and I'm going to call the variable that's passed in other. And now I'm going to, just to test this, type out debug.log uh, collision detected with plus other.gameObject.name. All right, so let's uh, make sure that this contact event is attached to the button, and let's see what happens. So I run the scene, and I walk over to the button. I want to bring up the console log so I can see that. And I run into it, and my character stops, and I'll uncollapse this, and every time I run into it, another one of these debug logs shows up. One thing you may have just noticed is that this box is stopping me from moving. And I don't think I really like that. I'd like to be able to move on top of the button. Uh, that's kind of a matter of preference. So I'm going to tick this is trigger box. Also, I'm going to go back into my code and I'm going to just copy this. And I'm going to change this to on trigger enter and change this argument to collider other. And um, also to differenti differentiate these, I'll say collision trigger detected with other.gameobject.name. All right, now I run the scene, and I walk over to the button, and now I see a collision of type trigger detected with the player, and the button does not stop me from moving. Okay, that's great. Uh, now one other thing I'll also just go over, uh, we don't really need these, but uh, just to show you that they're there, to create a couple more methods on trigger exit, collider other, uh, 
and I'll just change the message collision trigger exited from game object dot name and then lastly on trigger stay um, and I'll just just to make it easy I'll just try to say trigger stay uh, detected with that name so I could explain what all these are but I think the simplest thing is to just show you I'm going to collapse that and clear them so now as I move you can see what happens at the console the trigger happens once the trigger stay happens continuously every frame and then when I leave the button the trigger exit happens once and very similar methods exist except with a uh, on collision exit and on collision stay it works the same kind of way and they have that different argument uh, for now I'm just going to get rid of on collision enter and also the on trigger stay and I'm going to comment these out so I'm not using them anymore and that is the basics of how uh, trigger enter exits and stay works also the difference between trigger collisions and regular collisions um, so as with the physics feel free to keep uh, playing around with those uh, however this video is starting to get a little bit long so I'm going to exit it there and save for the next video the actual mechanics of having this button press cause the door to disappear uh, as well as a few other interactions so thank you very much for watching as always and I will see you in the next